界10号区のエクスクライバーファンの皆さんケイン・トキオカですいよいよ始まったエクスクライバー世界大会全世界から集ったエクスクライバーがインターナショナルな名車で華麗なテクニックを披露するカーニバルにここサンタモニカもヒーヒーヒーカー Hello again, everybody. Today's video is going to be a little different. If you're a fan of Japanese cars, there's a good chance you're also a fan of other parts of their culture, particularly anime or Japanese animation. If you're not familiar with it, you might think anime is just kiddie cartoons, but with a foreign twist. All big eyes, high pitched voices, and bright colors. Just like SpongeBob SquarePants, only with more sushi and less Krabby Patties. However, anime actually deals with everything from true children's fare to really serious adult topics, such as the essence of true happiness, the ability of love to transcend time and space, the indomitability of the human spirit, and of course, how good the escort services are in a medieval fantasy world. I swear, I did not make up that last one. Naturally, there are anime series about cars, and some of them have become hugely famous. But today, I'm going to talk to you about one that's very underrated and is almost forgotten now, despite its obvious merits. If that sounds like your cup of green tea, then catch me after the intro. Welcome back! I'm Oliver, and this is 23GT. Whether you're new to the channel or have had a taste of my insanity before, welcome! This all started as a personal automotive blog focused mainly on Nissan's and the company's flagship performance car, the GTR. Besides being a car geek, though, I am very much an all around geek, so I'm into a lot of other things, one of which is anime. Needless to say, I love it when two of my passions, like cars and anime, get together, so today I'd like to talk about an old favorite car centric anime series. Many Japanese car fans also happen to love anime, and some car focused series have become immensely popular. Even more casual import car fans have probably heard or maybe even watched Initial D. The epic story of one talented young driver's battle against tofu spoilage and roving bands of drifters. If you're a bit more of an enthusiast, you may have seen One Gun Midnight, the tragic story of one young man so obsessed with his modded 240Z that even the wiles of a beautiful fellow racer and television newscaster can't save him from a lower lifestyle. Old school fans may be more familiar with Speed Racer, a show that's inexplicably named after some young twerp instead of his obviously way cooler older brother, Racer X. There's something about him that reminds me of Rex, my brother. Can something be the matter? You're looking at me in a very strange way, Speed. Tell me, what's on your mind? Ask about car-related anime series, and inevitably those three shows get brought up. Much more obscure is the series X-Driver, which is kind of sad considering it's every bit of a treat for the car-loving anime geek. X-Driver first came out in 2000 as a straight-to-video series with six episodes. Before you jump to the conclusion 
that straight to video means the show was rubbish, like those cheap action movies you see in the Big Lots bargain bin, that always seem to star either Wesley Snipes or Nicolas Cage and maybe a lesser Baldwin brother or two. Back in the 80s to the early 2000s, straight to video was a very common practice in anime. Many great shows were released as OAVs, or original animation videos, because back then, anime wasn't big business as it is now, and it was hard for shows to get a coveted TV slot or gather up the bucks needed for a theatrical debut. X-Driver's creator was Kosuke Fujishima, the manga artist best known for his cult classic series Oh My Goddess and You're Under Arrest, as well as being the character designer for most of Namco Bandai's Tales role-playing game series. Fujishima Sensei is notorious for his beautiful art, good-looking characters, and also for being a total gearhead. You'll often see lovingly detailed drawings of real-life cars and motorcycles in his manga. Anything from a Honda Moto Compo to a vintage Bro Superior to a Ferrari 288 GTO. And many of his major characters are gearheads themselves. The prime example would be Kiichi Murasato, the lead dude in Oh My Goddess, who's an engineering student, gifted mechanic, and talented racer. There's also Miyuki Kobayakawa, one of the two female leads in You're Under Arrest, who personally soups up her patrol car by stroking it out and throwing on a turbo and nitrous. Beautiful, sweet, loves to modify cars, and enjoys using handcuffs, I'm telling you, that's total dream girl material right there. Um, anyway, with Kasuke Fujishima being such a gearhead, it's only natural he'd create a series focused on cars, and that's where x Driver came about. The premise is actually really cool and somewhat prescient to boot. Basically, in the near future, Almost all cars are electric and AI driven, so most people don't even know how to drive anymore except for a select few skilled individuals, known as the X-Drivers. In this computer-controlled future, every now and then an AI car can glitch and present a hazard to innocent bystanders, so the X-Drivers then swoop in to stop the road car. With the rise of autonomous vehicles and advanced self-driving aids in regular cars nowadays, you can see how this future world is actually starting to become reality two decades after the show first came out. To be an X-Driver, you just have to be skilled at operating a regular non-AI car. Well, you have to be a decent shot too, we'll get to that in a second, but there are no age or gender limitations to being one. Because of the public service that they do, and their rare talents, X-Drivers often become celebrities that are adored by the regular masses. So just think about that for a second. How cool a concept is that? If you're a passionate car geek who prides himself on his driving skills, then how awesome would it be to live in a world where the common people who can't be bothered to learn to drive actually adore you? for terrassing across the city and pulling off sick stunt driving instead of thinking you're just some maladjusted hooligan. Oh, and you get to have a gun. This gig sounds better by the minute. Okay, you might be wondering how the guns fit in. To stop an AI car safely, X-Drivers first try to knock out the vehicle sensors, which usually causes it to go into failsafe mode and come to a safe stop. 
the AI cars generally come with front and rear sensors as well as GPS. To knock out the GPS, you need to get ahead or beside the car and chuck a chaff line at it to jam the signal. For the front and rear sensors though, you get the single shot handgun that shoots some sort of putty to cover them. Since the sensors are in pairs front and back, X drivers often work as a duo, and needless to say, you'll have to be a decent shot to get a hit on a moving target like that while driving a car at speed. You also need skill if the sensor method doesn't work because then it's time to break out those sick driving moves to try and force the rogue car to a stop someplace safe. Now let's talk about that X-Driver title for a second. To native English speakers, the name X-Driver doesn't immediately bring to mind an exciting action series about gifted motorists serving the public good. If you didn't know of the anime, your first thought would probably be of some crappy reality show about assholes who've had their license revoked from DUIs or just plain stupidity or both. It really is kind of an awkward title, but if you look at the X-Driver logo, it sort of explains where it came from. Apparently, the X part stands for Exceed, Exact, and Excellence. All good qualities to have for our heroes. Thank God it doesn't stand for Exhibitionist, I guess. There are X-Drivers around the world, but at the start of the series, we're introduced to one young Japanese duo. Lorna Endo is the level-headed responsible one, and drives a Lotus Europa. Her partner, Lisa Sakakino, is much more hot-blooded and drives a Subaru Impreza 22B at the start, but then gets a sweet Lancia Stratos after the first episode. They're young, but considered as gifted X drivers. In the middle of a difficult job, though, they're soon joined by Suichi Sugano, who, despite being only 12, drives his Caterham Super 7 JPE like a half scale Ken Block. <laughs> Suichi's name, by the way, is probably an homage to another famous manga author, Shuichi Shigeno, the creator of Initial D, arguably the most famous of all car-focused anime. You can see already that X-Driver has an interesting mix of cars just from the main characters, but as the series goes on, we see a wide variety of other non-AI cars, ranging from a souped-up Daihatsu Midget, the various GDM sports cars, to European exotics like a Lamborghini Countach. Nissan lovers get thrown a bone with the souped-up 240Z that American ex-driver Kelly is shown driving in the movie. Speaking of the movie, X Driver originally debuted as just the six episode OAV series that finished in late 2001. In 2002, though, the show got a sequel movie that was paired with a short prequel episode. 
Since it was made in the early 2000s, the original series is almost entirely hand-drawn animation, the quality of which is quite good for the time. The movie, on the other hand, uses a mix of regular animation and CGI for the vehicles, but this is early in the days of computer-generated graphics in anime, so it's not as well integrated as it is nowadays. It's not bad, though, and the cars do pick up some added detail. While the OAV series mainly showed the daily life of being an X-Driver, in the movie, the main trio head off to the USA to compete in the X-Driver World Championships, a race that decides who's the best X-Driver team globally. Needless to say, they get caught up in some illegal shenanigans that require them to team up with their fellow X-Drivers from around the world. The story ends up more on the level of a Fast and the Furious than anything serious, and there are some facepalm worthy moments, but it's a fun romp nonetheless. The movie also came paired with an extra prequel episode that is set in the time before Lorna and Lisa came along when their seniors, Nina and Ray, were the active team. <laughs> In the original series, Nina and Ray were just side characters, but since they're both um, quite easy on the eyes, you can see why they got their own dedicated episode. Kazama Reisa. FA license of the X Rider, yo. Yarashiku. Ah, shashiburi ne Nina. Ai kawarazu shiro shika kinai no ne. Anata mo ne Rei. Sono pheromon mukidashi no sensu wa. Futari wa oshiriai nan desu ka? Mukashi, chotto ne. Sadly, the movie would be the last installment of X Driver. Even though the show would be aired all over Asia and was decently successful at the time, it wasn't a huge hit. Nowadays, it's pretty unknown, and the official US DVD releases are long out of print. The good news is that you can currently watch all of the original series plus the movie for free on Tubi. You just have to sit through some ads. Check out the link in the video description if you need some help with your Google Foo. In conclusion, X-Driver is a fun show that presents an intriguing vision of an autonomous car future that doesn't seem so far off nowadays. If you're a car-loving anime fan, it's well worth the watch, so please give it a try and help rescue it from obscurity. That's it for this video, so please let me know what you think in the comments, and thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, drive safe everybody! ねえ、お姉ちゃんたち、エクストライバーだろ。うん、そうよ。俺アキラ。この俺をこの<笑> <笑>どう
もっと強くねじ込んでそう体全体を使っていいわそいちくんレレイさん俺俺もうダメです<笑>整備を全部やらせるなんてレイさんも人使いやらんよ文句言わないのそいちくんは若いんだから走りも整備もしっかり鍛えなきゃ